Hola chicos, en este video vamos a mirar una introducción al pretérito, the preterite tense, introduction. Um, vamos a hablar de general uses, how we use this new verb tense, and we're going to compare it with other tenses. So remember the word tense is a key word. We're talking about um, verbs and we're talking about when things take place. So, so far, um, if we talk about the tenses that we've discussed in class, we've talked about the present tense, and the tense means it's taking place now, um, or sometimes in the near future, and we use that, you know, with all kinds of things. For example, yo hablo español en la clase de español, I speak Spanish in Spanish class, happening now in the near future on a daily basis. We've also learned the imperfect tense, or el imperfecto, we used this as a past tense. We used it to describe past actions. And we used it for ongoing actions in the past, repeated actions in the past. Um, so we used to say, for example, we could say something like, Cuando yo era niño, yo iba al parque mucho. When I was young, I used to go to the park a lot. And that's a past tense, takes place in the past in something that, again, was repeated. Um, over and over again, something that was done more than once. And finally, the next tense that we're going to discuss is the preterite tense. And the preterite tense is also a past tense, so in that sense it's similar to the imperfect, and it's often compared to the imperfect. But here, it's really to describe events that um, began and ended in the past. Which is to say that instead of saying, for example, I always used to go to the park. It would be something like, I went to the park yesterday. I played with my friends. These actions, it's not like you're saying I used to and I went every weekend. So it's more for an action that began and ended in the past. And that's the basic idea. So there's your sort of comparison with other tenses and uh, a general use of the preterite tense. So in this screencast, it's, it's going to be relatively general and again for the purposes of an introduction. So let's go to the next slide. Vamos a hablar de la formación. We know that every verb tense, we need to talk about the formation of how it works. And so we're going to start with AR verbs, um, which are, are generally our easiest verbs. And we're going to start with a nice easy verb, like the verb hablar. And we know that this verb means to speak or to talk. And, you know, just like we did with the present tense and then with the imperfect tense, we take this verb and we divide it up into an ending and a root or a stem. Here's your ending. AR. And here's your stem. If you cut this ending off, you're left with hable. And this is what you add your endings onto. That's where hablo comes from. I speak or hablaba. I used to speak. And here, like I said, is where we're going to attach our endings. So what are our endings for AR verbs in the preterite tense? Well, our endings, and this is really important, to memorize the first thing that we need to know about uh, the imperfect tense. Here's our endings for AR verbs. Remember, we're talking here, any verb that ends in an AR in Spanish and that is regular. We'll talk about irregulars later. The yo form is a. The to form, aste, ele usted, o. Nosotros, amos, vosotros, hastes, ellos seas ustedes, aron. So these endings really are very different. We have to note right away that we see accents, an accent here in the yo form, an accent here in the ele usted form. So that means the difference, for example, between yo hablo español, I speak Spanish, and yo hablé español, I spoke Spanish. So we talk about tenses, I'm talking about time, when something took place. So here's your first set of endings that really need to be memorized. These are your AR, and I should put here, just to be thorough, regular verb tenses, uh, verb endings, excuse me. Bueno, so there's our ARs, and we can go back and reference that whenever we need to. So, <coughs> excuse me, like in other um, verb tenses, we only have one other set of regular endings, which is kind of nice. The ER and IR verbs combine to come up with one set of endings. So if we take a very common um, uh, ER verb, for example, like the verb comer, right, to eat. We know when we want to say I eat in Spanish, we say yo como. You know, we eat, comemos, that's our present tense um, conjugation. 
And in the preterite tense, we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We take this verb and we have two parts of it. And here is our root. Here is our stem. This is what we're going to add our endings onto. So now we need to figure out what are our endings right over here of your ER and IR verbs. Remember, these are IR verbs as well. So the, these endings will also work for a verb like escribir, to write which is an IR verb, it's going to have the same set of endings and you just add your ten endings onto this. Escribe. And our endings are, instead of the A that you saw, let's just put this ER and IR up here, and these are regulars. Regulars. Sorry about my writing there. Um, the yo form ending, the first yo form ending, is E, with an I. Accent. Two. Iste. El usted, yo, nosotros, imos, vosotros, istes, and then ellos es ustedes, yeron. So if you compare this to the box that you have on your sheet, you have it right next to it, you're going to see some similarities between the AR and the ER and IR verbs. Um, both have accents in the yo form and the third person singular on the uh, I and the O here, uh, on the E and the O in the other form. And then a lot of these are just really replacing an I um, with an A, or an A with an I depending on how you're looking at it. Um, and you, you see this run at the end, this is similar as well. So they are. it is logical the way it works, um, and this is sort of our first step is memorizing what these endings are. Um, and being able to use them in sentences. So bien, vamos a parar aquí. We're going to stop here. Um, you have filled out your ending sheets. You have a basic idea of what the preterite tense does, and you're ready to try some um, activities in class on the packet that, that you'll be given. Um, and that's that. Muchas gracias por su atención. Nos vemos en clase. Chao.